Hey everyone, it's Colin with Legalized Mischief Productions. Thank you for joining me and welcome. And today I'm going to be doing the second uh, base construction series. And we're going to be going a little bit further. If you haven't watched part one, it's just a simple uh, textured base with some slate chips and skulls and stuff. Um, but it's very much uh, just kind of your basic uh, textured base. Uh, today we're going to be adding some height. We're going to be using some different materials. Uh, everybody's favorite basing material. We're going to be using some cork um, and some rocks and some kind of earth texture. So this is to build a little bit of height into the base and just a little bit more uh, visual interest into the base. I'm using a 90 millimeter round base uh, because I'm going to be putting a Redemptor Dreadnought on it. Uh, this is the Redemptor Dreadnought from the Grayscale tutorial which I highly recommend uh, watching if you haven't watched it. I think it's a good one. Um, but this is going to be turned into the Space Wolf Dreadnought for uh, my Space Wolf tutorial. So I'll be building a cool base for it uh, using some cork and some rock and stuff. And it's going to be covered in snow, and that will influence our decisions when we're making the base. Um, it means the ground cover doesn't have to be as complex. but we do want some stone. We do want some interest there um, so that when it is covered with snow, it doesn't just look like snow. It's not just like a blanket of snow over the base. So I have the model on hand because when I'm building it up, I want to make sure that the feet sit flat. I don't want the Redemptor to end up like this because of because I just wanted to build a really cool base. So it's important to have the model on hand when you're building a base like this. Um, this is sheet cork from, you know, office supply store, art store. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is just break it up into smaller pieces. No rhyme or reason. We're just going to kind of, because I don't want these, I don't want these straight edges, right? We're building a natural base. So we want, again, we want that variation. We want that. randomness that'll be more than enough so first things first I'm going to get some just regular super glue there we go I use uh, extra thick Super glue, this stuff is great. I use it for everything. So I'll get kind of these bigger elements and just kind of stick them on the base like that. And I want these to be pretty close together because this is going to be just kind of the foundation of, of the base. And then I'll build up I'll build up some height from there, but overall the base is going to be a cork width taller than just a standard, than just a standard base. Um, I'm not particularly worried about, you know, gaming wise he him standing taller or anything like that that's not really a concern when building this base so just push it on easy peasy so that so now we have that first layer of cork and just want to check and make sure the feet are going to fit however we want to however we want to position him He's going to have some room to sit. And now I don't want to build it. Like I don't want to go necessarily like three layers deep um, on the cork. Cause then we're looking at a base that's way higher than like, I don't want the dreadnought standing up that high, but I can have a couple little elements um, that are that high that just aren't where he's going to be standing. Right. So, I'll probably end up 
putting him somewhere around like here. So I can go on the front part here or the back part here, I can go a little bit higher. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this cork and I'm gonna take a sharp uh, hobby knife. I'm gonna get my mat down. Because one of the things that makes cork basing look Unnatural is how perfectly flat the the top of the base ends up being. You want to be very careful when you're doing this. I've cut myself more than a couple times trying to do this. So just come in here and just cut this sheet, this little bit in half. And what that does is it just makes the top irregular. And it just makes the top not flat, basically. Um, and it's also obviously very thin, it's half the size of, it's half the thickness of the other kind of cork pieces. Um, and what we can do with this is come in here and add these so that the tops of these cork pieces aren't perfectly flat. If those are perfectly flat, it's going to look unnatural. I'm always talking about um, kind of variation in natural elements when you're doing basing or when you're doing weathering or anything like that. That variation is what's going to make it look natural. If it's uniform or if there are sharp corners or sharp edges, um, depending on what it is, then it's not going to look as natural. So just cutting these in half with a sharp blade gives us that natural variation. And these can overlap on different pieces and kind of blend them together. And then we're going to come in with, we're going to come in with some, some putty here in a second and and really blend, really blend all this together. So but this is the key. This is a key to getting cork basing because we love like the, the edges we love. We really want those to be featured. Um, and you want to I want to be careful. I, I'm seeing that I'm getting these bits these this kind of second layer of cork i'm kind of concentrating in the middle of all of these pieces that i've already laid down and i don't want that that is going to look unnatural so i can kind of bridge the gap there and just make it look like one kind of larger piece to integrate those together i don't want just a bunch of you know little islands on the base per se. Again, being very careful when you're doing that because you can seriously injure yourself. And this is not, you know, this is not gonna be a small base. This is not gonna be a subtle base. This guy's gonna be large and in charge. Um, you know, for me, it's fun because I'm doing this for the Patreon. I'm doing this for, obviously, I'm doing this as a model giveaway. So I don't necessarily have to worry about how it looks or how it functions. I can just, I mean, obviously, it's on the right size base for gaming. Um, I don't want to completely invalidate the model. Um, but I can just make it look cool and, you know, and the, and the, concern there I'm just concerned that this is going to look cool so kind of filling in these gaps here uh, with just a little extra cork and then i want to take a couple of these smaller a couple of these smaller pieces and now we can come back again and just double check so it'll probably be sitting like that right around there. 
So we can come back again and just add another, another little layer to really get some height on these rocks, kind of in the front and in the back. And remember, this is all gonna be covered by snow. So you're really only gonna see the sides of all these rocks, but we're all, we've already got some nice kind of natural, like you can just see how natural that looks. There aren't a lot of those flat edges left and now, because cork, like this stuff is really, really squishy. And soft. Squishy and soft is not great for basing. Um, you can use thin elm PVA uh, for this. You can use, um, you know, and that works. Uh, I like using, this is super thin super glue and this will soak into the cork. And this just makes it rock hard. So this will help, especially when um, pinning the model to the base, you're not just pinning into really soft cork you're pinning into super glued adhered cork that is just rock hard um, it, it prevents it prevents pieces from kind of flaking off as we're working on them on later steps on the base like especially when painting if we're doing a heavy dry brush which we will be um, sometimes you can knock off Kind of those corners from the cork and this prevents this prevents that but oh boy does this smell that oh there's a lot of a lot of fumes in that step and it dries super super quick so we'll be able to move we'll be able to move right over to um right over to the next step with the basing but good God, does that smell bad. Whew. Make sure you're in a well-ventilated area when you do that step because, whew. Also kind of freaks me out that that step makes this heat up. Um, I'm not sure what the science is behind that, but um, it gets warm <laughs> when you put the thin cement on it, uh, which kind of freaks me out. But you can see now, this is much, much harder um, than it was, you know, when we started. So uh, that is ideal. And now we're going to take it another step further. And I am going to get this old super destroyed brush that I keep around for just these sorts of occasions. And now I'm going to use um, plastic putty from Vallejo. You can use Milliput. Um, I don't know about, I don't know if green stuff would work as well, but um, you can use Milliput, you can use plastic putty. Um, and really what we're going to do now is kind of soften the edges and we're going to soften uh, those joints between, between the, uh, between the elements here. I like the Vallejo because it does come in this like dropper bottle. So I can just, cause we don't want the, we don't want these sharp edges where these meet necessarily. We want to kind of soften that. So I'm just going to put some plastic putty at the joints here. Whoop. It's fine. Spacing definitely down on the ground level. And if I can't get in there, that's fine. I'll just be mashing this putty around anyway. So if I can't get necessarily in those areas with the dropper bottle, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. See right here, we have like a, a pretty sharp line right there. So I'm going to make sure that I get some putty there. 
make sure that I get some putty in here. A lot of these other areas, this area right here. So really where there's, if there's like a large flat area of cork, I want to make sure that I'm getting some putty there. And now I'm going to take this brush because I don't want to obliterate, I don't want to obliterate the texture on the side of the cork because that's really one of the big attractions of using the cork. But I want to I want to integrate those cork pieces together and I want especially the flat elements to have a little a little texture on them like right up here. And it may seem like a little thing, but when you go to like dry brush, when we go to dry brush this base, it'll show, it'll rate, it'll show up. So just very loose, very fluid, not really worried about. Ooh, that was a lot of putty right there. That's okay. Just going to mash it around. Because we don't really want that sharp line where the cork meets the base either. We want to fill that in a little bit. Now we're going to come back with basing, basing material after this putty dries. But, you know, if those sharp lines were there, when we put the basing material down, it's going to find them as well. So we want to find those sharp lines with the putty and mitigate them before we move on to before we move on to the basic material. So like that gap between these, and I can just kind of fill that in. Kind of stab, stab, stab. And this hopefully the goal is to take away take away that, oh that's a cork base. We, you know, we'd like to get to a spot where they're like, wow, that base looks really cool. What did you do? Instead of, oh, hey, a cork base, you know, because it has those straight lines and it has those, it just looks like you put cork on a base. Um, if we can integrate this together, then you know, it just looks that much more natural and less just like, hey, you put some cork on a base. Nice thing about Baleo Putty too is it's water soluble. I got some rocks out, but I don't know that we're even gonna have space for rocks. So we'll have to wait and see. Definitely find a home for a skull though. It being 40K and all. Um, so we're going to let that dry, and when we come back, we're going to apply the earth texture and the um, couple little decorative elements like skulls and things like that. But remember that this base is going to be covered with snow, so we don't have to go crazy on the details. So we'll cover that when we come back uh, after we let this putty dry. It doesn't take... It doesn't take too long for this putty to dry, but I'm not going to sit here on camera um, while and have you guys watch putty dry. So <laughs> we'll be right back after this putty dries and we'll finish up uh, the building element of this base um, for the base construction series. So see, see you in a few minutes. And we're back in the putty that plastic putty is dried for the most part. Yeah, it's dry. Um, so now you can see where, like here on the base, we we blended those joints between the corks, the layers of cork, and that will give us a much more natural look to the basing. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go in with this Vallejo Earth Texture Acrylic. Um, their diorama effects 
line is really cool. It's like it's like GW's um, texture paints. I mean, you could go in with you know any of their um, kind of sandy sandy uh, textured technical paints and do the exact same thing. This is just a giant tub of technical paint, basically. Um, I really like it because it's really fine. I like it for this application. It's really, really fine. Um, it's not, it's not super grainy, uh, which is perfect for this base because we are doing a snow base. I don't need a lot of height out of this stuff. I don't even need a lot of texture out of this stuff because it's really going to be covered. Um, you can see, you can kind of see how, how, how small that grain is. Um, so this is going to be, um, just our basic ground texture. And most of this is going to be covered by snow. So I'm not particularly worried about it. Um, this would be a great texture to use for like Adeptus Titanicus because in scale, um, this stuff is a lot smaller than your typical 40k like the the um acrylic gel that i used in the first base construction video would add a lot of height to the kind of ground elements on this base which i don't need uh because you're really not going to be able to see any of this or much of it so it's just there for something to be painted to give it a little bit of um, variation in height and a little unevenness. I mean, I'll paint it, of course, but it really is just ground cover. Uh, we want to make sure to get in all the recesses. If I were doing just a standard base that I was going to like paint the surface of the base, I would use the acrylic. That, that coarse pumice gel and do the same basing that I did in the simple base construction video and go from there. But because this is a snow base, I really don't need, I really don't need anything at all fancy on on the uh, ground cover. And I'll get into, I'll do another video on how, how to best use those texture paint. It's from GW. Um, I have some from AK. I mean, all the big companies make them now. Um, Vallejo, AK, GW, uh, they all have their own version of um, of those texture paints. I really like them. I really like GWs. I think they work really well. Um, and I like, you know, Vallejo I can buy locally. So that contributes. I mean, I can buy GW locally, but Vallejo, you also get this giant pot, which is a giant tub of, of basing texture for a reasonable price. So that's also attractive. Um, but I use the GW ones as well, the GW crackle, cracked earth and stuff like that are really cool. So I'll do a video on those as well. So here we're just filling in around the sides of the base. And we're good there. And we're gonna go back with a knife and scrape the side of this and get it clean before we paint it. So. That's not really the end of the world. I do want to make sure I get down in here though. And getting some texture on the sides, not a big deal. I'm going to fill that with snow anyway, but I just want to make sure to have some in there. And then if we notice like a kind of a flatter area, you can always just apply some over the top just to give it a little texture, some in here. And again, most of this is gonna be covered. 
but I do want to add a little bit of a couple little Easter eggs, some, some interest here with the texture paint. This is just a little applicator tool from Tamiya. Um, I got a box, I got a package of two for like six bucks or something. It has a flat spatula end and it has kind of this scooped end. Um, and it's pretty handy for, for doing basing and stuff because it doesn't, I'm not using a brush. It's not going to destroy a brush and um, it cleans off really easy. So that's handy here. I have just some, some rocks. These are pretty, these are pretty big but you can get a couple of these kind of just placed there. And the, the texture will, will hold that in place well enough. Um, maybe one on the side here. And again, those are gonna be covered mostly in snow, but because it's 40K, Just grab, I keep, I, I'm crazy. So I clean the mold lines off the skulls. These are from the GW skulls box. And, um, which is just one of the greatest releases ever. So I clip them and then I clean them and then I put them in this little salsa container so that when I need some skulls for a conversion or I need some skulls for basing, I just have all my skulls, um, just ready to go. And I need a skull that doesn't have a jaw because I need it to be short. The only downside to this is getting the skulls out of the little salsa container. And you see I have this void right here under the cork. And that doesn't look super natural and I'm not really, I don't really want to just fill it with snow, which I could, of course. Uh, I'm going to take this little skull and I'm going to drop it right there. And then I can take this and just kind of have that skull peeking out under there. And that way, when I apply the snow, I can kind of apply the snow up here and I can apply a little snow in front, but you'll hopefully be able to see that little skull peeking out uh, from underneath there. That'll be a cool little element uh, on the front of the base or the back of the base, whichever it ends up being. And we can do the same thing kind of in here. And I'd be tempted to put one, you know, in some of these voids here, but those are really just going to be covered with, unless I wanted to do like a pile of skulls, which doesn't really fit with the base that I want to do. I could just do skulls in some of these, in some of these recesses here, and that'll be, and that'll be good. So I'm grab one more. And that is pretty much where we're going to leave that. And I'll get that primed up and uh, after everything dries and get some pictures uh, posted alongside the video um, of what this, so you can see kind of the textures and everything better. But, you know, that's a pretty straightforward base. Um, and it's going to look really cool. Again, we took some liberties because the base is going to be covered in snow. So, you know, eventually I'll do another one that, that'll be like fully painted uh, and have to stand on its own. And that will be approached a little bit differently, just a little bit more attention to detail when it comes to, um, you know, the ground cover and stuff like that. But, um, you know, this is gonna be a really cool base uh, for a really cool model. So I'm super happy with it. Hope that uh, helped. The cork work is really is really where it makes a huge difference in having a natural looking base. So 
Thank you. Hope you uh, enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, you know, leave a comment or shoot me a message. Uh, I'm always happy to answer questions. So thank you. Thank you for your support. And we'll see you again soon.